You're watching Israel Business Weekly. I'm Michelle McCorry. He is the software billionaire who helped make Israel's attempt at landing on the moon possible. Morris Kahn, chairman of Space IL, invests his wealth in life sciences and clean tech companies. He backed the ambitious goal of landing an Israeli robotic spacecraft on the moon. The Bereshit lander did not make the soft landing that was hoped for. It crashed on the moon's surface, but it did make it to the moon, and the mission is still regarded as a major success. And now Mr. Khan has his sights set beyond the lunar surface. Morris Khan joined John Steinberg, the president of LTS News USA, the parent company of I-24 News, at our studios in Tel Aviv. John Steinberg here for Israel Business Weekly. We're in Jaffa Port in Israel, and our first guest is, is one of the great entrepreneurs, one of the great Israeli entrepreneurs, uh, a world-leading philanthropist. Uh, I have Morris Khan here with me this evening. It's a pleasure to have you, Morris. And it's a pleasure to be here, I tell you. Um, what you've accomplished with the founding of Amdocs, one of the, the great success stories uh, before that golden pages in Europe, um, you know, you are far and away the greatest Israeli entrepreneur, and so it's perfect to have you here on Israel Business Weekly. I thank you. Let's talk about let's talk about the space program, uh, Space IL, which is one of your biggest areas of focus right now. What what are you looking to achieve with that program, and where do we stand in that program right now? Right. Well, first of all, with that program, uh, the my objective was to uh, put Israel on the moon. And by putting Israel on the moon, I wanted to get Israel aircraft industry, our partners, into space. Now, they are involved in space with, the, with communication satellites and observation satellites, which we need for our security. But they're not in deep space. And one of the, one of the objectives was to get them there. And I think we did that. The other one was to actually give Israelis and Jews around the world <clears throat> a sense of pride, pride that we've done something. And I think we did that too. And the third and most important was to encourage Israeli youth to get involved in science, mathematics, space. And we really got a million young children deeply involved in space. They were up at 4 o'clock in the morning to watch the launch on Purim, which is one of our festivals. They were all dressed up as astronauts. I've had people tell me that he's got three sons that all want to be astronauts. So I think we did something for Israeli youth. And we achieved, we basically, we got to the moon. We achieved our objective. But where we sit today, when, when you and I were speaking before we came on air, you said to me that that global warming is such a pressing problem in your mind um, that you wonder if you shouldn't put your resources into that now that would otherwise go into space. How critical is the global warming problem and how much of a focus will that be for you in the coming years? Well, let me just go back for, for one step. We actually got to the moon. Mm -hmm. I believe we actually achieved our objective. Okay. We had a hard landing. To do it once more, just to prove a soft landing, compared to something that we could do with that kind of money for global warming, I think requires a little bit of consideration. And global warming, in my mind, is one of the key problems that is facing humanity right now. If we don't do something, this planet on which we live is going to become uninhabitable. And we're rapidly getting to a point, an inflection point, that it'll be too late. You do so many humanitarian good works, um, whether it's into immunology or you were telling me before about uh, bringing sight to people in Ethiopia who had never seen before, never had sight before. Uh, do you believe that solving global warming is almost like a, a, a healthcare good work or a healthcare necessity that will be the most impactful way for you to continue uh, your work around worldwide health? I tell you, I've, I've, I've got to think now what I do next. Mm -hmm. And global warming, I think, is perhaps the most critical problem that faces humanity right now. It's incredible. Um, as an entrepreneur, when you look around at Israel and you look at the work that Israel has done in uh, agriculture, computer vision, uh, artificial intelligence, and the like, uh, what do you think is the most important scientific focus that should come out of the country in the coming years? And, and where do you see there to be 
um, you know, a, a groundswell of, of strength or, or particular talent in the country? I think that Israel right now is involved in a tremendous amount of medical research. I think there's a really, uh, it's, it's really amazing. And there are a lot of things that are coming out of it. And I'm very excited by the medical research, the, the work being done in Israel now. And I'm personally involved in a number of projects. But I think one of the projects that Israel will excel in is perhaps cyber security. Mm -hmm. I think this is another problem that humanity is going to have to face. And for Israel, cyber security, cyber security is critical. And I think we have, I think we made a big contribution so far. The checkpoint. I think we're leading. I think we're. I think we're. I think we're one of the leading groups in the world in developing cyber security. That's so interesting because you know, in the years that you've lived here, physical security has always been the pressing concern for Israel. With you know, with the need for Iron Dome and things of that nature, in the United States cyber security has been very pressing to us because our our enemies are you know China and Russia that often look to infiltrate us with with cyber because we're not contained. Uh, in a landmass the way that Israel is. Uh, why do so many Israelis feel that cyber is threatening to them when around you there is so much physical threat? We're handling both of them. Both of these challenges are important. We're not neglecting the physical challenge. And we're taking steps to make sure that physically we will survive and that we can hold our own. Let's turn back to business for a moment. You know, the U.S., we had our yield curve uh, invert last week. Um, it's looking more and more like we're heading into a recession. You're someone who's lived through and built businesses during um, numerous cycles. What is your overall economic outlook, and what do you think in particular an entrepreneur or a business owner should be thinking during this time of tremendous economic uncertainty? There's no question. We are right now going through a difficult period, and it's be very interesting to see how it develops we might actually be beginning to get into a serious recession. Rates of interest are so low that they cannot be reduced very much. And uh, I think we've got to do something fairly quickly. And we have a problem with, uh, with America's trade relationship yes. with China, the way it sees its communication and commerce with the rest of the world. And I think it's going to have a tremendous impact I think the impact of what America is doing right now, we haven't begun to feel yet, but I think we will in the, in the near future. It's, it's concerning. It, it, it's interesting because for Israelis, um, Trump's pro-Israel stance has been very, very welcome, right? But I think that you know so many of the personal behaviors um, and also certainly this trade policy type stuff is very disconcerting. As an Israeli. You know, uh, how do you think about Trump and also, you know, those around you? There's no question that Israelis feel that Trump's support has been tremendous for them. But I'm afraid that actually he's given us a sense of security and we're doing things that I think we should perhaps not do. I think that the backing that we've got from Trump might make us a little bit overconfident and I think we should be a little bit more cautious. I'm concerned. I really am. Well, go on. Say more about that. Well, for example, the moving of the, of the embassy to Jerusalem, I think that was important for, for Israel. But it, we should also realize that actually there are about 250,000 Arabs who are living in Jerusalem. And it was done with no consideration for them at all. I think we've got to be, I think we've got to take the overall position into account, not just the American-Israeli pact. And, and, and thoughts on the denial of the two congresswomen from the United States that wanted to come to Israel? I think that was unfortunate. I think, it was, I think it's unfortunate. I think that we should be very careful. We, Israel. I think Israel has, has always had a policy of having an even balance with both Republican and Democratic parties. I think if we go too much to one side, we will one day perhaps pay a price for it. And, do you and I'm concerned. And do you speak to the Prime Minister and have you expressed these concerns to him? The Prime Minister and I don't discuss subjects like this. We discuss space. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, well turning, turning back to, uh, to business. Um, 
do you see more or less opportunity uh, for you know for a Morris Khan who's you know 20 years old, maybe just getting out of the army? Uh, you know, what would you tell that that young Morris Khan today? I tell him, go for it. The opportunities are tremendous. You've just got to have your eyes open, look for the opportunity, go for it. Don't be deterred if at the beginning you don't succeed. Don't. And I would just give him another word of warning. The biotech field is a great field, but it's very risky. The dangers are tremendous. The likelihood of success is very small, but when you do succeed, the success is great. You and you're making a contribution to the well-being of mankind. Do you think software is an easier field even today with all the competition and how much has happened since you started Amdocs? Oh, uh, no. When we started with Amdocs, it was, Amdocs was just a natural development of what we were doing. We were very fortunate. We were at the right place at the right time with the right partners and the right people, right management. And we had our heads screwed on right. We didn't lose perspective. Amdocs has turned out to be a fantastic company. It always has been. And if they continue, I think they always will be. The love for the oceans, is that tied to your environmental um, concerns? Or it just seems like you, know, you love space, you love the seas. Many people say the sea is less explored in some ways than even, even space. Um, tell me about your passion for, for the sea. Actually, I enjoy nature, and the sea is part of nature. And somehow I've, I got involved in the sea quite a long time ago. We built aquariums around the world. We've enabled tens of millions of people to see the underwater life that they would not have seen otherwise. And I'm concerned with the ocean. If we're not careful, we're actually getting to a point that the only place that you'll see fish will be in an aquarium. You punctured your eardrum uh, when you were diving, right? Yes, I did. And then you went back to diving, right? I punctured my eardrum. I went back diving. I've done it again. I went back diving again. So do you ever face any setback where you decide to stop, or do you always just plow through every setback you face in your life and in business? I think I need a little bit of psychotherapy. I actually don't stop when I should, but that's who I am, that's and who that's... You are. That's who I am, and that's how I live. And so you basically have no fear? Not really. Now, there's, between fear and wisdom, there's a very small, there's a very small gap. I'm not sure really where I really am. I think you have a unique, I think you've got a fair amount of wisdom. Uh, anyway, anyway. I, I enjoy life. What, what can I say? Well, that's a great note to end on. Uh, Morris, it's been an honor having you here on our first episode of Israel Business Weekly, and, and thank you so much for joining us. I thank you. Thank you. Thanks again to Morris Khan of Space IL and John Steinberg. And thank you for watching this edition of Israel Business Weekly. Remember to follow us on Twitter and Facebook, and be sure to join us next time for more on business tech and innovation from the startup nation. I'm Michelle McCory. We'll see you next week.